friends, today's video is a very special one because we will be exploring a completely new headset that hasn't been released to the public yet. This tiny little thing that has a lot more power than it looks is called Arpara. Before we dive into this review, there are three things that I need to tell you right away so that you know that this review is gonna be good. First, Arpara is the first ever 5 K micro OLED VR headset with a ridiculously high resolution of 5120 by 2560. To compare, the combined resolution of Quest 2 is 3664 by 1920. I can tell you already, this display is the major selling point because micro OLED displays are amazing. The colors are super sharp and you get the blackest blacks and you don't see any pixels. Second, believe it or not, this tiny little thing is is a powerful PC VR headset and with this Arpara tracker, Arpara turns into a Steam VR headset completely compatible with Steam VR trackers and HTC Vive or Valve Index controllers and that is brilliant. Just look at how small it is, the form factor is really impressive here. Compared to bulky and heavy PC VR headsets currently dominating the market, Arpara is a miniature work of art. Paired with this 5K micro OLED display and the ridiculously high resolution, this has great potential. And lastly, something you might not expect, but Arpara can also be connected to your phone and used as your personal movie theater wherever you go. Well, now that I've got you hooked, I can dive deeper into this review. So far, everything I've told you is just a theory, and I'm here to scrutinize it as much as I can to get to the bottom of this and to answer this question, is it worth $400? Alongside this one, Arpara also announced a standalone headset coming soon as well for $599, which I hope to review as well when it is available. Arpara is currently running a Kickstarter campaign for both of these headsets, but before you go on a shopping spree, let's take a close look into this PC VR headset from Arpara. This is going to be great. And if you're ready, let's go. Let's start with the form factor and what we are actually getting right out of the box. I love how VR headsets are getting smaller and smaller and I also like the design of Arpara. When you wear it, it kind of makes you look like Cyclops from the Marvel Universe. It has this plastic strap with a knob on the back but without the top strap. Now let's look under the hood, there's lots of things here. Two volume buttons to the right, 3.5mm jack for your headphones, which are optional because Arpara has their own speakers, which are pretty good actually, they're surprisingly loud. The two buttons here change the modes between 2D and 3D and by repeatedly clicking on them you can change the resolution. The port to connect our part to your phone or to your PC. There's also a microphone and this dial that is used to change your IPD. It moves very smoothly, meaning it can accommodate pretty much all users. There's a proximity sensor just like in Quest and you can also adjust your diopter very easily just like that so that you don't need to wear glasses with this headset. So this is the Arpara the way it is in the lightest form without the track for Steam VR because the first thing we're going to try is connect our para to our phone and try to watch some movies so we don't need that tracker here. Before we move on, something very interesting about this headset, our para doesn't even have a power button. That's right, you just plug it in and it's ready to go. And another thing I need to talk about is what kind of phones our para can connect to. Different phones might have different requirements and might provide different functionalities. For example, iPhones can be connected using some something called Microcast Ultra Clear All-Around Converter, a device developed by Apara specifically for iPhones, which will allow you to use your phone sort of like a remote controller, and the headset will function in 3 degrees of freedom. You need to purchase it separately if you want to unlock this functionality, and unfortunately I did not receive this item for my review, so I couldn't test Apara's connectivity with my iPhone. There is also the list of all compatible phones on their website, while it's not 
stated clearly here, the developers told me that some newer versions of Android phones, such as Samsung, support their app called Arpara Home, which also allows you to use the phone as a remote controller in three degrees of freedom. I happen to have a slightly older model, which is Samsung S9 Plus, and this model only supports the mirror mode. If I connect this to the headset with a USB-C cable, it will mirror the phone display directly into the headset like a projector, and all you need to do is simply connect it and allow permissions. But it is not three degrees of freedom. The screen you will see in your headset will be static projection, which will remain in the same position even if you move your head. That feels weird because we are naturally used to moving our heads and especially if the screen is so big and trust me the screen looks ginormous in VR. Every time I try to look in the corner and I move my head but the screen moves with it and it's counterintuitive and a little annoying. I did not really enjoy the experience of the screen basically being glued in front of my eyes but I guess this is what you get with an older phone. I truly wish that I had the mirror cast so that I could connect my iPhone phone to our para and enjoy the three degrees of freedom and I really hope to do so in my next review. The unfortunate trick here is that you cannot charge your phone and use our para at the same time because it will need to be connected to the USB-C port, the port that I use to connect my phone to charge it. So if it's occupied by our para, then you only can use it for as long as your battery lasts. Regardless of the annoyance, I have to talk about the quality and it looks absolutely stunning. The image is razor sharp, the colors are quite bright and overall it looks simply amazing. If I had the three degrees of freedom, this probably would be my favorite way of watching movies, especially on the go, like on the plane, because the small form factor is such a big advantage. I only wish that there was a way for me to connect my phone to the power at the same time because if you're watching a three-hour movie on a plane you're probably going to drain your battery way before you finish watching it so if you're really into this idea you might also need to invest in some kind of a portable wireless charger so that was the phone mode and now we're going to get to the meat because we will connect it to PC to play some Steam VR games and here is everything you will need to connect it to your PC a Windows 10 computer or laptop up with the minimum specs as listed on the screen. Make sure that your PC or laptop also has a display port. This cable that will come with your Arpara, this Arpara tracker attachment, and HTC Base Station 1.0 or 2.0 and HTC Vive controllers or Valve Index controllers. A huge thank you to Arpara for providing me the necessary equipment to test this headset. And now let's actually look at this tracker. So this is the tracker that turns our para into a Steam VR headset. It has these trackers and it snaps right onto the front panel of the headset and connects to this port located on the top. Very easily this little device turned our para into a Steam VR headset. Now connect the cable to the display port, all the USB cables, and finally to the Arpara headset and run SteamVR. A quick note, I experienced some flickering when trying Arpara for the very first time, but it got fixed when I changed to a different display port. So if you have the same issue, try doing that. SteamVR should quickly recognize Arpara, and in my case, I just paired the controllers and started the initial setup. Very soon I was able to enter my Steam VR home. Let's start with the good things. The first thing that impressed me is how sharp everything looked. I couldn't see any pixels at all and I was frankly absolutely stunned at the difference I saw. I'm showing you the footage through the lens right now but I really doubt that the sharpness I'm talking about can be seen in through the lens recording. Honestly the recording from my computer screen probably looks more similar to the level of sharpness I saw in VR and and that is really impressive. When I was wearing Arpara, I saw the beauty in every detail. Like I was mesmerized by the texture of this leaf in my Steam home. I was absolutely astonished by the statue on the wall and how crisp the image looks. I have never seen such sharp image in VR in my life. And I've never even realized how pixelated the image looked at my quest, even while playing PC VR games with higher ultra settings until I compared them to Arpara. I could literally see everything on the horizon 
horizon. Every bird was sharp to me, every creature and every tree. It just makes you want to stay there and explore all those 3D models with vibrant colors and crazy sharp edges. On a quest, image often gets pixelated or a bit fuzzy, especially when you're looking far ahead of you and the details lose focus. It is especially noticeable when playing air car. The fuzz I could see on quest was everywhere and I've always thought that it was just the effect of the rainy weather, but on our para, all the fuzz was completely gone. I could see the ridiculously sharp images of buildings, of the spaceships, of the water, of the sky even. It shocked me how much of a difference everything made. And I absolutely fell in love with the blackest blacks in VR, especially noticeable here in the first room of Rhythm of the Universe Ionia. The blacks in micro OLED displays are stunning, and it makes our para perfect for games that predominantly use dark colors. But the sharpness is everything. Okay, now that we've talked about the good, it's time to talk about the bad, and there's a lot to cover. I will start with the absolutely biggest issue for me, and that is so-called motion blur. Literally, any time I would move my head in VR, I would see this very noticeable blur effect in front of my eyes, which made everything look out of focus and blurry. All the sharpness of the image I was talking about earlier can only be appreciated if you do not move your head or move it very slowly. But when you do natural movements, this motion blur made the gaming for me very uncomfortable because I could see how it could trigger some motion sickness and overall it's just not pleasing aesthetically because you cannot enjoy the crisp sharp images anymore. That alone was the single reason I could not play any games with Arapara for a long time, which was truly a shame, but it just didn't feel good to me. Our para claims that some people are more prone to motion blur while others are less prone to that and some reviewers have not even mentioned them because maybe they didn't notice them but that was the first thing that I noticed and that was a big deal for me. And just to compare the blur that I'm talking about, you absolutely cannot see when playing with Quest. It is just not there. But it's like the most noticeable thing for me when I play with Arapara and it makes it just really difficult and uncomfortable and not enjoyable. I tried it, my husband tried it and we both noticed it so much that sadly we couldn't enjoy playing in VR. I certainly cannot imagine playing for a long time. The developers emphasize that this headset is still not the final product and there will be many changes and improvements to the hardware and software and I hope so much that this blur will get fixed in the next iteration. Another issue with Arapara is that I found this system to be very unstable. Very frequently I would get random issues with it like showing black screen and red screen on the computer, not showing Steam VR but instead showing my static Windows background, red screen in VR or one less showing the game and another one being completely blurry and a few other similar problems and every time I managed to fix this issue by doing one and the same thing, disconnect and reconnect our para and restart SteamVR. This is not how a reliable system should behave and it's just made it feel like a beta product that glitches at random times for no reason and you have to turn it off and on again to get it to work. In addition, some games straight up refuse to work with our para. For example, Wanderer and no matter what I did, it would keep loading up in 2D and all I could see was this static intro screen. So even though the game ran, I could not get it to run in a VR mode. Air Car ran well, but for some reason in this game I couldn't hear any sound or music. And another game, No Man's Sky, was completely unplayable due to a very heavy lag. I obviously couldn't test all games, but it sucks that some games would not work properly or would straight up not work with Arapara. And another thing I've noticed is that the colors on the periphery seem to be getting slight brownish tint. You can see it when I move my camera a bit on the Arapara, but it is non-existent on Quest. I couldn't say it caused me too much discomfort, especially compared to the issue of motion blur, but still, something to keep in mind. And finally, the comfort seems to be a pretty big issue for our para as well, and I will talk about it separately, starting with the facial interface. This is the facial interface that they sent me initially. It's probably the most uncomfortable thing ever. Why is it so terrible is because this material here is quite rough on the face, and the curve that you see here is actually much bigger than the actual curve of my face, some of the lights were leaking inside and it caused glare in the headset. And they sent me the replacement very quickly, actually. The soft cushion here already feels 
much softer and nicer to touch it looks smaller so when i actually put it on my face it covers my entire face and doesn't leave any room for the light to leak so overall it feels much more comfortable and they also sent me this video that shows the person playing in vr using our part for a really long time and having no marks left on the face even after playing for such a long time indeed i found the face mask to be much better than the previous one but still it wasn't good enough i kept feeling the pressure and there was still marks on the face as you can see even my husband fell victim of the discomfort of this facial interface mind you this was after wearing our para for about 15 minutes with a new and improved facial interface so probably their new design might be okay for some people but it should not be the final design as i still found it to be too thin and still causing the uncomfortable pressure in addition our para is getting quite warm while playing and because it's so small this heat radiates towards your face and you can feel it and playing vr games is already a pretty dynamic activity that makes you sweat but i'm afraid that this additional heat will make it even worse and it's not a good thing and i will also talk about the head strap is the traditional head strap sort of design if we compare it to quest strap that presses the headset to your, towards your face and normally you would also need to have this top strap that supports the weight of the headset and granted this headset is extremely light but still it does have the weight when you press it to your face you can feel it i do think that this is an easy fix you know it's very easy to change the design or to simply make a hole in this facial interface and include the top strap so this is not a big deal but it is what you're getting and i have to mention it so this is what this headset is like as you can see there are some things that i liked a lot about it such as visuals and the sharpness of the image but at the same time it does feel like not a completely finished product and i tend to give the developers the benefit of a doubt because they have been extremely well at communicating with me and responding to all of my questions and concerns making sure that i understand that this is the work in progress and they will still very much be upgrading and delivering this product to the later stages making it even better in all of these aspects that i had some issues with starting with the face mask and ending with some visual enhancements that i hope that they will be able to fix because the image still looked extremely sharp and compared to quest even i saw this difference i saw how crisp the graphics look and i just enjoyed it so much but unlike quest the motion blur was way more noticeable here and i i, I do not feel that at all with quest so ultimately you know, there are still a lot of things that we are taking on faith. We we believe that they will fix facial interface. We believe that they're going to improve the visuals and remove this motion thing that some people experience. And we also hope that this discoloration thing will go away as well. But for now, the Kickstarter campaign already finishes pretty soon. And I don't know if there's any other reviewer that will deliver a more updated version of our part review and don't forget that there is also an all-in-one headset announced in the kickstarter 2 yet not a single reviewer has been offered to test it before the end of the kickstarter campaign while they have been very transparent about tethered arpara they're very secretive about their all-in-one headset which is quite suspicious because even though you're giving your money with the faith in both headsets you have no idea what the performance is like in the standalone headset but this review is about tethered arpara and they did make some improvements to it since they introduced it for the first first time. For example, they did, however, introduce this amazing Arpara tracker. They turned this headset into a Steam VR headset, which is such a great improvement just based on that delivered promise. I tend to believe that Arpara is going to deliver on other promises that it has given us. This is a very promising device. The form factor is impressive. The quality is great. There is room for growth. And I think this is what we need to take out of this review is that this is still work in progress. I do like the direction where it's going. While I will not tell you whether or not to spend your money, I'm sure that you will be able to make your decision after watching this review. Definitely let me know in the comments what you think about this 
PC VR headset tethered R Para. And if you have any questions about it, also let me know. I will answer them as best I can. If you would like to see more informative VR content, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Disco VR for more. Thank you so much for watching, friends. Stay safe. And as always, happy gaming.